So welcome, bienvenidos, to today's core peer learning circle, which is part of a series that we're doing about grant reporting. Today, we'll talk about some ways to uh, talk about your grant successes in reports, which we're calling humble bragging. These peer learning circles are a little bit of a different format from our usual core coffee chats. They're more of a conversation where we can all share tips and learn from each other. I'm Nicole Lezen, one of the local consultants who facilitates a countywide initiative called the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based or Core Investments, along with Nicole Young. We're your host today and we're joined by our colleague, Jane Conklin. As you can hear, our core institute events are held bilingually in English with Spanish interpretation. Today, Stella Lauerman is providing simultaneous interpretation and Gisela Carrasco is providing consecutive interpretation right now, and she'll also translate your comments and questions in the chat. Um, before we get started with our discussion today, we thought we'd do just a very quick overview of CORE, and I'll turn it over to Nicole Young for that. Great, thanks, Nicole. You wanna go ahead and go to the next slide? So CORE is an acronym that stands for the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based Investments. And we think of it as both a funding model and a movement to achieve equitable health and well-being in Santa Cruz County using a results-based collective impact approach that's responsive to community needs. So there's a lot of key concepts packed into that statement there. Uh, but we have a couple other things that we refer to often in terms of what CORE stands for and what we mean by collective impact and, and equity. Uh, and that's captured here in the mission and vision statement um, where you can see again that emphasis on safe, healthy community and collective action, equitable opportunities for all to thrive, uh, health and well-being at every stage of life. And so we refer to these in every core event, just remind ourselves that core is much more than just a, a specific funding model, which some of you may be familiar with. And we uh, refer often to the core conditions for health and well-being as a central part of the core framework as a reminder of this is what we're working to create, equitable opportunities for, for people throughout our community to experience these eight vital interconnected core conditions uh, and that interconnection between these different aspects of health and well-being with equity at the center is a really uh, key component of the core framework. And events like core coffee chats and today's peer learning circle are part of what we offer through the core Institute for Innovation and Impact. So think of the core Institute as basically the learning arm of core investments where we feature different topics and it's really just a, a, an opportunity and space for people from all different types of organizations and sectors to learn together, build common skills. Uh, and Nicole and I serve as the hosts uh, for these kinds of events. So we're glad to see everyone here today. Okay, Let's see, thanks Nicole. Um, as I mentioned earlier, these peer learning circles are a little bit of a different format from our core coffee chats, um, which you may have attended in the past, but they're all still about learning. They're designed to be a little more informal and conversational, so we're not presenting something to you the way we often do or have a guest present things, but really more of a conversation that's centered around a theme and an idea um, that we can just share tips and challenges and learn from each other along the way. So this series of uh, peer learning circles is all about reporting. Um, and today's theme, humble bragging about your grant successes is partly due to timing because around this time of year, the end of June, um, it's the end of the fiscal year for many organizations and funders. And so many grant reports are due around this time. But we really hope that the things that we talk about today and throughout this series about reporting will be useful anytime that you're trying to convey what you've accomplished and what your challenges are to funders and others. So we did ask you to let us know some questions that you already have about this as we were um, seeking your um, information for the registration for today. And so here are some of the questions that you shared with us when you registered. So what can be done early on to ensure easy reporting down the road? And then how do you align 
reporting requirements for a funder with things that might be different within your organization. So evaluation questions, planning needs, et cetera. And then also how do other organizations track outcomes? Um, so what, what else are you, are you uh, doing beyond what you might be doing for a particular funder or what, what to do, some, some related questions maybe, what to do when the way that you track outcomes is different from what your funder is asking. So there's a lot within these. We'll try and get through all three of them. And is, does anybody wanna add a question at this point if you didn't have a chance during your registration or you've thought of something since then, maybe you were working on a grant report this morning <laughs> or earlier this week. Any additions to our list? All right, well, let's, let's start with this first one. What can someone do early on to ensure easy reporting? So if, if one of you who's, who's on the call today asked this question, or if, even if you just are uh, someone who could have asked this question, could you elaborate or let us know anything else about it? What brought that to mind? Bailey, go ahead. I see your hand up. Yeah, so um, I asked I asked this question, and um, what I really mean behind it is what um, you know kind of practices I can take to be organized so that you know at that last crunch time I'm not freaking out of oh I forgot this or I needed something right here and I I don't have it. Um, so that's pretty much. Uh, the question. Okay, so partly just how to organize information to have access at, to it yeah. at different times. Okay, so I'll put this out to the group. Does anybody have um, any particular tools or tips or strategies for how you do that? And sure, just a really practical one, but. Um is still super useful. Like if I know the report deadline, I will put it in my calendar as soon as I know it and then even set reminders to, to go off like a month before. And then, you know, and then I can, you know, set reminders like remind me in a week again, just so even those kinds of things, like at least get it on my radar because if it's not on my calendar, it doesn't exist. Um, and then if there are multiple people that will be involved in writing the reports, like making that a calendar invite so that it's on everybody's radar uh, can really be helpful. I'll jump in. We um, Thanks, Celeste. I'm Celeste DeWald. I'm the de development director at the Community Health Trust of Pajaro Valley. Um, and it's my first meeting, so nice to meet you all. I, uh, we have a grant tracking meeting that we do every month with the program managers and our finance, our financial um, personnel as well. And at that grant tracking meeting, um, we review all of the status of the outcomes for all of our grants and when the next um, reports are due and the upcoming applications. And I, I have found this to be very helpful because you know, it, I have done it in the past where you don't really think about the, as a development person, you don't really think about the outcomes until you're ready to do the report. And then there can be so, some surprises, right, in that. Um, and so I find it, it's helpful to have it be that regular check-in, even if the report isn't due in a year, that you you have this this ongoing dialogue about what are the expect? What are the outcomes that you said you're going to do, and what's the status of them? That's a great one. Thanks, Celeste. Jane, I see your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, and I think I wanted to build on the point that Celeste made. I know sometimes um, in my past life I've been kind of a grant monitor and worked with agencies, and sometimes it's it's kind of surprising there can be a disconnect between the program staff who are implementing the grant and the people who are reporting on it. So making sure that staff who are implementing are really aware of what the grant objectives are, you know, sharing those like on award, 
um, and as you know, you're getting ready to report on that, so um, that they have a really clear understanding of what data they should be collecting, what the intentions are of the grant. So when it's time for them to report on it, you're kind of uh, that that sort of through line is really clear from service delivery through the reporting. Thanks, Jane. That's such an important point and so easy to lose sight of. Um, sometimes when somebody like Celeste is responsible for doing the reporting, um, people can forget that they have contributions to make to that on an ongoing basis because sort of somebody else's job to, to report. But that's is really often a team effort or could or should be. Um, welcome. I think if I could add just a yeah. little to that, Nicole, as well, is yeah. I also think it's very helpful that if you um, that because we have those monthly check ins, um, there aren't that we know ahead of time whether or not we need to go to the funder to redo the scope of work or what the outcomes are. So if it seems like things aren't going as planned, then we have an opportunity to kind of discuss that with the funder and think of them more in that kind of partnership role. Um, so that that it's been helpful in that way as well. Yeah, that's great, and um, I think that's that's a point when we talk about in our in our next session about challenges and how to how to discuss and report those. That's a really good point. The more of a heads up that you have, and that you can, um, when it's possible, to inter interact with a funder in a spirit of problem solving and adjusting. It isn't always possible, but when you can, that's it's really great to have more lead time for that. Um, Welcome to those of you who've just joined. We're, we're tackling a question together about what, what can be done early on to ensure easier reporting down the line. So we're sharing some tips and strategies and we've talked about doing monthly tracking meetings, um, trying to get input from the implementation program staff as well as those who are doing the reporting. Um, so if anybody else has other suggestions or ideas for anything that makes that process a little more efficient and, um, and easier on, on everybody, we welcome them. Any other thoughts? And Nicole had suggested calendaring things like report deadlines and including other people. So that's, so it's not a surprise at the end. We've been playing um, in our core team with Airtable, which is a, um, a tool that's a, a type of spreadsheet basically, but it can be viewed in different ways as a grid or a list or a calendar, but something like a Google sheet where you can have links to um, an, a, a report in process, for example, where people can add to you know, their parts. Let's say there are three different people in your organization implementing different aspects of a project or program, and they don't need to complete the entire report, but they could give you some dot points or some insights about a particular segment of it. And then you can be responsible for pulling it all together. Um, and again, those kinds of things that have nudges or are easy, easily accessible to people on different teams or different parts of an organization. And so you're not sending around thousands of emails, which is still my default mode a lot of the time, I have to admit, but um, so has anybody used tools that you find particularly helpful for um, collecting information from different people in your organization or tracking something like this? What, what do you, you, you all use when you're working on a report with other people? We just, we use Word and Excel. Them, yeah, you know, and share and you know and tag people in comments and stuff like that you know it, yeah. it, it works yeah, that's about it yeah I really like Google Docs although there is some resistance at my agency to using Google Docs but I I, I just like it because everybody can be working on stuff at the same time and it it feels very simple and clean to me yeah it has it as I've used it more, I've gotten more fond of it, but. I know it, it, because it's newer. I know people are a little reluctant and you can get to it from any computer, which I also really like. Um, that is helpful. Yeah. And I found with working with um, other organizations and people, you know, everybody has their own thing, their own way of doing it. 
a little bit of Google Docs TA goes a long way. Like I've, I've worked with people who don't realize that there's a difference between making a suggestion or editing. So sometimes somebody's in editing mode and they're just changing things and you can't tell immediately what's been changed, stuff like that. Um, anybody else? Tools you like or don't like or want to try? Okay. Well, if you think of other things that could help someone be more organized for um, or steps to take early on before a report is due, feel free to keep sharing them in the chat. But let's move on to our next question that was submitted um, as part of the registration process. So that was how best to align reporting requirements with the information, evaluation, and planning needs of the agency. So that's a really good one because often th those are not aligned um, or different funders have different requirements. They might even define objectives and outcomes and things like that differently. So you're not only aligning with your own agency, but with multiple funders. So it can get, it can get tricky and complicated. Um, did someone who's on the call today happen to ask that question? Would anybody like to elaborate on it or explain more about where that came from? I think that was a question I had. I feel like when I've been working at an agency, I'll have so many information reporting needs that I'm like, you know, this funder needs that, or, you know, we need to develop this kind of information for a board report or an annual report that's like an outward facing document. So I think like, you know, I'm kind of interested. I feel like sometimes I just keep track of all of those things in my head, like, okay, this is the data source for that, or this is kind of, you know, the timing for that. And I, um, I just didn't know if people had similar kinds of, you know, challenges sort of drawing from lots of different sources or had any particular tips um, they used on those pieces. Anybody? I had a similar um, situation before too, where sometimes I found that when I'm writing different grants, even if it's, if it's about the same program, I might phrase the outcome slightly differently <laughs> depending on the funder. And then I have to remember Oh wait, what did we say for that one? And is do we actually have to measure it slightly? So even just creating some kind of again, like whether it's a, a Word doc, Google Doc, Google Sheets. Um, I've been using Airtable more and more because then I can also just uh, plug in hyperlinks that take me right to, you know, another document if I need to. Just even having that, you know, things like that help me keep my keep things straight in my head about. Oh yeah, we said this for this one <laughs> and this for this one. Um, and I think for me too, having um, to the extent possible, like an evaluation plan that's pretty comprehensive around the program. So again, whether it's those, you know, uh, process or outcome kinds of uh, metrics or objective, you know, like that, that to align those as much as possible, but it is true. Sometimes funders want to see things slightly differently. And so making sure that you track that, um, is important as well. Anybody else? Thanks, Emma, for your comment that you like the question may, may or may not have any answers at this moment. That's, that's why we're here. Try and figure some of these things out together or share some ideas. I really want to echo Jane's point about an overall evaluation plan, and it doesn't have to be fancy or elaborate, but even something that says, here are the main things we're trying to find out with our programming, um, and here, you know, this set of measures or outcomes or reports is related to this evaluation question, or here are some others over here, and just so you have something that gives you that big picture and how the different pieces fit into it, especially if, you, if you've got multiple programs going, can be really helpful just as a touchstone. And also for these other communication purposes that we'll talk about in some other sessions about 
things that are beyond reporting to a funder. So having this sort of package of um, programs, objectives, outcomes, ideas. Maybe you have something that looks like that, that might be called a logic model. You might have a theory of change. You might have you know, a, a variety of formats for something like that, um, that includes what you're tracking as evaluation questions or metrics. Um, but that, that can be useful. And the other thing I would add, and I'm going to stop talking, is I think sometimes, you know, educating different stakeholders can be important. So if you're getting sort of, um, you know, leadership or board level requests, you know, sometimes educating them about um, what you're doing that's funded and required. And so you kind of don't, you can sort of, try to make some consistency on the things that you report up to those stakeholders so that you aren't necessarily having to, you know, collect this set of data for this funder, this set for another funder, and then something a board member wants or, you know, a program manager to just try and kind of streamline some of those um, information requests, I think sometimes can be helpful. And the, the other point I'd make related to that, Jane, is, um, and Celeste, you alluded to this when you said you had monthly tracking meetings that involved program staff and finance staff and others. Um, if there are staff meetings or you know uh, project meetings where you can share what you've done with the data that you've collected, um, just to let people know that what they're reporting to you for these reports, if if you if you are using them in other ways to talk to board members to develop some visuals for a slide to um, pursue more funding in another grant. Some, something that makes people realize that you're not just doing this to check a box, ideally for a funder, but, but that you're actually putting some of this information to use in different ways can be motivating both for um, the quality of data and then just to not feel like it's busy work or just something that someone is, uh, that you're having to ask somebody to do just for no reason. It can sometimes feel that way. So I would say if if things aren't currently aligned, um, if the reporting requirements aren't aligned with other things that you're doing in your agency, if you can find a way to align, you know, make make that alignment clearer or better, um, it can it can serve multiple purposes. Any other thoughts on this one? Okay, our third question was about how other organizations track outcomes. Um, does anybody, did, did anybody on the call today happen to ask that question or wanna elaborate on it? Well, there are so many ways to track outcomes and even to come up with them in the first place. <laughs> so, um, what what questions do you have about this or or suggestions? What what do you all do? This might have been my question, but okay. <laughs> I honestly don't remember what I asked, but I think that I agree with this question because I I'm curious, like we just use an Excel sheet with you know the outcomes listed and then we kind of track it by each, like we have uh, columns for each month to see how we're doing and meeting those outcomes, but I'm just curious if there's other software programs out there that people use, or if there's, um, you know, if there's other um, kind of creative ways on how people are doing this. Okay, thanks, Celeste. And I mean, Excel is um, is simple and old school, but it really works. And so that's part of the reason we all tend to gravitate towards it. But what what else are people using? just for the tracking part, let alone coming up with outcomes. I mean, if, if you had to report on something right now, what, and if I asked you about the outcomes for something that you were working on, where would you go to get that information?
Is anybody using a tool other than Excel? Yeah, uh, related question is, does anyone you have databases where you feel like it's they're set up to really be able to easily run reports on outcomes or or is it kind of a database to enter maybe client information or raw survey data and then it's still a separate step to track results in an Excel sheet or something like that? We have a system called Athena that we use for um, for patient kind of tracking, but there's there's not a it still takes a manual process to take that information and then put it into the Excel sheet for the outcomes you know that we're tracking for the grants. So that so it's even though that it seems very separate from the grant activity. Um, Okay, Cheryl, and thanks for your comment in the chat. So you're you're going a consulting route, possibly using smart sheets to build a data collection tool from scratch, it sounds like. It's a big lift. Yep. That is true. Any other thoughts about this? I'm going to just jump jump in here. I'm Patrice, and I am um, sorry I missed the first couple minutes, but no worries. Um, I joined because I do work for an agency that is not a nonprofit agency. It's like a not for profit. Parts of it are, are I guess, for profit, not for profit. But we have had several programs recently because we work closely with the county and in behavioral health and working with unhoused individuals um, that some of our newer programs are grants that in conjunction with the county programs, they get a grant, but they then kind of contract our services to do the work. So we're not nonprofit and I'm not used to all of these things, but working now with grants that have this um, need to track the data, uh, uh, the outcomes and all of that. And one of the things that, well, we've been lucky enough to have with one of them is a a program, a consultant that does all this because it's like, oh my God, I don't know anything about that. I don't know how to do that. And it's also very time consuming. It's 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 a time consuming process. I mean, they are devoted solely exclusively to that and have been trained and have, you know, have that. So I'm watching that, but I'm also noticing that um that one of the things that happens with us at least is that these grants are written and we say, hey, we're going to, to do this and try to meet these grant you know, proposals, outcomes and goals. But also the grants are written by somebody else who has an idea and the idea is a wonderful idea, but then when you start to implement it, then you come across these things, which your first two of these core, ch core chats of like the humble bragging, like, yeah, we're not reaching those goals yet, but we're doing these other great things that, you know, we think are really important. And then also in my head, it, it's, it's like, um, how, how can we get the data to show some of these things that are good that weren't initially necessarily written into the original outcomes and goals because what we're doing is important and there's challenges in here that you're not taking into consideration or that is not written maybe between the lines but not written how can we highlight those to make those important enough 
so that you can see, yeah, as written, we not, might not be meeting that, that highest of things, but the work that is being done is really important work and should continue to be explored and funded because it's important and we're seeing results, albeit maybe not exactly what was in that initial plan. So I'm just saying that I'm putting that out there because it's kind of why I joined. I am not familiar with the nonprofit sector and, and the working with grants. And I still am not exactly a part of that, but I'm working with sometimes the people who are doing that piece, either directly or indirectly. So trying to have a better sense of how to make that, you know, work. Yeah. Patrice, it's a great point. And it's certainly, I see a lot of nodding of, of, among the people I can see. Um, and it, it's just, um, it's just a challenge. There, there are some funders that really do invite that kind of reflection and conversation and exploration and others, not so much. And so that's, that's a challenge all by itself. Yeah. Um, some of the things you're talking about might be um, more suitable for a conversation rather than a report. Um, so that's just something to think about. Again, depending on the um, the openness of a funder to entertain the idea that we may not always be able to foresee a year or two or three into the future, how everything's gonna unfold exactly. Um, but this idea of learning from things that don't go according to plan is really important and finding ways to weave that in, even if you're not invited to um, respond to that question. I, I do, I wish all funders asked on a report, um, you know, what, what didn't we ask you that we should have? Um, because I'm sure that would yield a lot of interesting insights. Um, and then some, you know, there's, some types of um, funding are more um, designed for what you're talking about than others. So there's some that are much more exploratory, planning, pilot, that kind of language versus implementation or capacity building or implementing something with fidelity where there's still lots of opportunity for learning because we're all human, um, things just go in different directions. But in any case, um, when, when there are opportunities to weave some of that learning into your existing narratives, and if there's room to do so, I, I would highly encourage that. Um, I don't know what others think. Other, other examples of when you have more nuances to report than 200 characters about outcome 1.2. I think sometimes the things that get forgotten or maybe they're just assumed happen, but um, are worthy of calling attention to is, are the basically the capacity building and the infrastructure building that is needed in order to implement a program and get to the outcomes that have been promised. And so um, if there are ways in the report to frame it as, you know, really important foundational work that's happening. So it might feel more processy, but if that's a way to explain, like here's, you know, this is really important, um, you know, whether it's startup work or foundational work or just something to, to convey that that piece of work is really important to do in order to get to the outcomes. And um, if you are able to convey that confidence that, it's worth it to invest that time up front, right? To get your procedures, your partnerships, your whatever it might be in place. Um, especially if, you know, in your first report or two, you're worried like, oh, we're not meeting our targets or it looks like we're a ways off from, from being able to achieve those outcomes. Um, that can help provide that reassurance to a funder or at least a sense of balance. Um, and then if, you know, if you're finding that, then over multiple reports, you're continuously finding, oh, wow, this, this outcome written by someone else really just from the beginning wasn't <laughs> realistic or it's not feasible to measure it that way because sometimes that's the issue, like the uh, the way it's phrased in terms of what will be measured and how it will be measured maybe wasn't actually grounded in 
uh, reality. <laughs> that that seems like a good conversation then to have with a funder if you're realizing, okay, no matter how hard we're trying or no matter how strong our infrastructure is, we're still going to run into challenges, but it needs, like if you've identified a, a, a workaround or a solution, but it requires some kind of modification in your contract or grant agreement, that that does seem like a really worthy conversation to have with your funder or whoever is, you know, funding your contract. You know, Nicole, you really hit the nose when when you said that, because that was another thing that kind of was was on my mind, because two programs are, are they're brand new. They're, they are like pilot. They're exploratory. They're brand new. So things are started from the very beginning hiring, figuring out, you know, kind of roles and staffing is kind of built in, but the whole hiring process, every procedure, understanding what the outcomes are, all of those things. And when a grant is maybe a two-year grant, well, that's a really quick kind of time frame to like pull everything together and start having or showing outcomes really quickly because it is so much of all that foundational work, you're, you're hiring, you're, you're training staff, you're getting all of your processes and procedures kind of underway and doing a lot of that hard foundational work to get up and going that is making good headway. But it's like, oh, well, gee, this takes a bit of time to begin, um, especially when it's, you know, brand new. And, and, you know, kind of, you know, we're really dealing a lot with the like housing and social determinants of health being kind of newly being discussed and talked about, you know, in, in, you know, in the county and the state everywhere in, in the nation, that this is something that is like a new concept and, and, and relatively, you know, not new issues, but critical issue of the day kind of a thing. Um, and so, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, again, you know, getting, getting word out in the public, having all the different stakeholders, um, involved all the communications so that, that build up and that startup, you know, yeah, takes time. So it, it's kind of like me wanting to figure out, you know, how, how do we, since I'm not familiar with the grant writing process and, and all of that, you know, kind of communicate that, maybe challenge some of the pushback or the like, yeah, was this goal really realistic? Is this enough time to get things up and going? You know, when and how do you, you know, yeah, talk about those things and when it, when is it appropriate and how do you do it in a way that you continue having funding and, and not lose it and share the good work and not just maybe the the outcomes that we hopefully someone hopefully thought they might have yeah, yeah I, go ahead Jane I'm just gonna say I think that's a really difficult position to be in when you know you've had a grant that's promised this and the reality is here and you're just trying to bridge that gap because you want your funder to understand the reality you don't want to be kind of um presenting something that's not true, you know, and grant reporting, it is about accountability, but it is also about educating your funder, you know, communicating what the reality is, because a person who is reading those reports, they aren't at this point in their career, you know, they're not necessarily program implementers. So, you know, you're on the ground, you understand what those realities are. So it's important. I think Nicole's lessons point about having that conversation with a funder, you know, some funders are very collaborative and kind of will understand when those disconnects happen and they may have technical assistance available to you. They may be able to connect you with uh, peers that are doing similar work. You know, sometimes there's peer-to-peer -peer technical assistance that can be really helpful. So sometimes they're really willing to be a partner to, um, you know, recipients in ways to kind of help them achieve their goals. Because the funder's interest is in serving the community in the same way. I mean, that's why they provided the funding. And so I think to the extent that you can of, you know, approaching them as a partner, I think that's really helpful. Um, you know, that's kind of would tended to be my stance when I was on the implementing side, you know, of, of program and also when I was a funder. So, um, you know, good luck with that. I think a lot of us have been in similar roles or kind of have seen uh, similar situations or seen 
um, that happened. So good luck. Thanks, Jane. And I would also say that just because something doesn't quite fit for this report and this funder doesn't mean you shouldn't still be collecting and tracking it for other reasons. So your, your own learning as an organization, the chance to pitch the same idea to a different funder who might be more collaborative and understanding, um, you know, or to be able to say to the next funder, hey, this is what we learned from our last round of trying to do this. And now we're ready to do more or do something different or whatever that those are still um, useful things to track and learn, even if they're going to be communicated elsewhere. Any well, other thoughts? I, I would just add to that. I think Patrice helping your the com you know the nonprofit that you're working with helping them understand that hopefully they can develop a relationship with the funder that you know and that and supporting them in helping them understand that they want the relationship to go beyond just this timeline for this grant that that really it's about you know the the funder and the nonprofit working over a longer period of time to help address those unmet needs. Um, so, you know, it's helping them understand that perhaps there's this disconnect now, but maybe there's some problem solving that they can do with them, not just for this grant, but for the future, I think is um, is probably important. So helping, helping that nonprofit develop that relationship is probably a, a good role for you. In this, in this situation. Thank you all, they're all very helpful. All good advice. Any other questions to pose to each other or additional thoughts about the questions we've just talked about? Well, we, we hope this whets your appetite for more discussions like this, but before we turn to those, I wanna just share my screen one more time. And these are some of the tips that we talked about before we talked to you. So we thought about um, revisiting a proposal or a contract um, that's even more explicit than the proposal and using that as the basis for uh, tracking what you either expect to happen or promised you would do. So we talked about that a little bit and different tracking tools like the, the uh, meetings that Celeste described or things like um, Excel spreadsheets or Google Sheets. And then um, one way or another, we've talked around uh, trying to identify some unexpected benefits. So things that might be beyond what you expected or promised would happen. And that's some of this, this last part of the conversation about involving other people and in, in what they, in your organization, and what they are seeing and learning from, um, from the process of trying to implement something. Um, and this could be outside of your organization. Maybe there are partnerships that are evolving or relationships with clients, engagement from clients, um, just anything that, that gives you a fuller picture. Maybe there are changes in policies and procedures as, as has been discussed, or maybe there's just a different, um, maybe you've learned something or your leadership has learned something about implementing this project that would be useful for others. So, so just don't feel restricted by the, the outcomes um, that you're expected to report on in conveying what, what's been successful for you, as well as the challenges, as we'll discuss next time. And then it's always good to start with um, what you're proud of in, in a project um, or an organization. Um, sometimes there's some unexpected answers in there. And again, that can yield, if, if that's a question to, to pose to a group at a, a staff meeting or a grant tracking meeting, um, maybe there are things that didn't show up in the formal objectives and outcomes, but that are still really sources of, of learning and accomplishment. Um, so that's just some phrasing that might be helpful. And then if you are 
using what you've learned to change something going forward. That's also sometimes a, a, an explicit question in grant reports about what do you what do you plan to do differently? But it's still a useful question whether a funder is asking it or not. So these are just some thoughts about other ways to uh, to keep the conversation going between reports that might make it easier when those reports come due to have more to say and more useful things to say. Any other th thoughts? Questions, examples? You know, I've been doing some uh, grant review. I have, I'm a consultant. I work for, for different organizations. And so we're, we have some year-end reports that are coming in. And I feel like um, qualitative data is having a moment, you know, and I think one of the things, you know, for this uh, funding mechanism and some others that I've worked with is they're very interested in um, uh, quotes or stories from service recipients, particularly those that demonstrate um, program outcomes, you know, how people's lives have been affected by participating in a particular program. And I feel like um, sort of if you are able in your reporting process to include those, you know, provided that you're collecting them, that you have the appropriate consents when you collect that information to share it, um, that those uh, just even little tiny quotes can be very powerful. And a lot of uh, funders that I've worked with are really interested in, in kind of hearing community voices in that way in reports. So it's something to think about, but you have to kind of set up that collection process um, in advance to be able to do it, you know, without bias and, and, you know, appropriate consents from participants, but they can be very powerful and people seem to really like them. And sometimes those are the quotes that get picked up in um, like reports to boards or kind of summaries of, you know, program impacts. So just to put that out there for consideration. Thanks, Jane. That's a great point. Yeah, especially for the multiple uses from harvesting those. Anybody else? Okay. So with that, Nicole, I think I'll turn it back over to you for a preview of what's next. Great. So we have some more events coming up in June. Uh, we have another peer learning circle coming up this Friday, and that's where we will focus more specifically on communicating challenges honestly and constructively. Um, and then just jumping down for a moment to the ones on June 26th and 29th, those will be our other peer learning circle circles. Similar format as today, we'll address whatever questions have been asked in the registration form, but then also see what other questions come up around data visualization tips, and thinking about sharing information beyond funder reports with different audiences. Um, so we hope you come back for one or more of those. Uh, and then also on June 20th, we have one of our workshops that we co-host with DataShare Santa Cruz County uh, called Harnessing Local Data to Create the Core Conditions for one of the core conditions. And so at this time, we're focusing on stable, affordable housing and shelter. So it's an opportunity if you aren't yet familiar with DataShare Santa Cruz uh, platform, we'll actually get a chance to look at and play around with and talk about some of the data that is on that platform um, in this particular core condition. So if you wanna register for any of those events, uh, just I'll put the link in the chat or you can scan the QR code on the screen if you have your phone with you. And then finally, we would love it to get your feedback about today's peer learning circle, especially since this is a slightly different format than some of our other events. And so again, Giselle will put the links in the chat. You can answer it in either uh, English or Spanish, or you can scan the QR code. Uh, once you leave this Zoom meeting, you'll also see a, a, a web page open up that gives you the option to fill out the survey in SurveyMonkey. We are so happy you all joined us today and brought your questions and ideas to share with each other. And we hope to see you again. Thanks, everyone. And thank thanks you, to Stella and Gisela, for interpreting and translating, and to Jane for joining us and chiming in with all her expertise and experience, which we really appreciate.
We'll hope to see you soon. And if you have ideas for other topics to tackle through this format, these peer learning circles, we are very open to your suggestions. So let us know.